Hey, good morning. Hey, good morning, everyone. Boy, oh boy, are we happy to be here with you today. Uh, unfortunately, Roman can't be with us, but it's for a good cause. He's doing his, uh, he's got some contractors, as you know, he's building a, uh, he's re, re uh, what's he, what do you call it? Um, Rehab. Re Rehabilitate, no, no, no. <laughs> he's uh, uh, renovating. A, yeah, renovating, that's the word. Uh, he's renovating a hundred year old house. Oh. And he's he's uh, he, he's just got a lot of things going on right now. So today, everyone, our show is about when humans help dogs. There are so many, 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 many stories that we. <laughs> what's the word I want to use? There's so many stories of all the good things. So we tried to cherry pick and pull out ones that we thought were absolutely exceptional. But before we begin, I don't know if my brother is here. Ron, are you here? Because today is my brother's birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. dear Ron. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and the reason that I bring that up is because I want to give them some kudos, meaning my brother and my sister-in-law, that's Barbara and my brother Ron and me when I was out there last Christmas. They are in their 70s and they bit the bullet and they adopted a puppy. Now the puppy was, she was I think six or eight weeks old when they got her, this is Chloe, and uh, they've done a wonderful job. I became the, 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 Grandmother, the, the grandmother, or the, no, the the well, what would I be? Yeah, I would be the no, like the, 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 the aunt. I was the aunt. aunt. She aunt. was like Velcro to me when I was there. So, I I love my brother and happy birthday. It's his seventy sixth birthday. A young which, man. Yeah, yeah, he is. So okay, let me see here. Who do we got? Uh, oh, my brother says yeah. Hi. Hi, brother. Hi. Happy How are my birthday, shingles? Ron. How are my shingles? <laughs> 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 Gee, let's bring that up, folks. Have any of you ever had shingles? Oh my God. Talk about itch. It's just an incredible thing. You can't stop doing it and you're scratching your head and, and oh, it's just, uh, uh. anyway, here we go. Hi, Sebastian. That's my pseudo son. Happy birthday to Uncle Ron. <laughs> and, and, yeah, 76 is young. <laughs> that's yep, very, very young. Good. Yeah, that's very true. Okay, so now one of the first show or one of the first things that we want to show you is there is this group that I had never heard of before. It's called wunderdogs.org and they had a fire in their shelter. And this homeless man came and he went into the shelter and pulled out everyone. Here's here's what the guy looks like. He went into the W Underdog, and here's what the shelter ended up. It was totally, oh boy. totally demolished. And he went in. So let me show you about him here. He went in, and he did such a wonderful job. People all over the United States and all over the world decided that they wanted to help this guy. Mm -hmm. So look what they did. They went ahead and they started a fundraiser for Keith, for Keith Walker is his name, and they raised $85,000 for him. Wow. Now, that's a wonderful thing, isn't it? Then we have the link for that? Yeah, we got the link. Oh. I'll, I, will, yeah. I will put that in. Sure. Okay. And then I thought what I do here is, uh, whoops, show you. This is their website. This is their Facebook page. Mm -hmm. the W underdogs. And at the same time, they have a video on YouTube that thought we, we've got uh, permission to be able to show this. So uh, let's show you about the, the underdogs to the rescue. Very compelling story. We need that. Yeah.
we barely can hear the sound so to the max. Okay. Isn't that great? It is great. Just a, a little note at the beginning, they state that uh, the gang are recruiting children. Uh -huh. and, and it's true, they are recruiting children of young age, like 9, 10, 11 years old. Right. And they are caught in the, the gang system. And as you imagine, it's extremely difficult to uh, free yourself from a gang system. Uh -huh. And uh, so having an, uh, an alternative like that, having this possibility of having a shell dog shelter, helping out, volunteering, uh, providing food, and so on and so forth for the community, it's a very alternative to uh, be drafted right. in a gang system. Well, you so know, I want to salute that. Yeah, and, and it, it, the good thing you said that too, because I was going to say a lot. You know, you you pick up the news, and it's hard to find these stories mm -hmm. with everything else that's going on, especially right now with all the political things. So to find this, it was like a small little area, and I thought, wow, this is the, these people are really doing a wonderful, wonderful mm -hmm. job. And then mm -hmm. here you have this homeless guy that was connected to the shelter, saw a need, and then did care about himself at all just went in to a burning fire and and saved i think it was uh, 16 or 20 animals which, which is really a fantastic thing so hey kudos to you kudos. wonder dogs yeah <laughs> okay you, yep. yeah yeah thank you keith yeah great okay now here's another one that i want to show you that Gaetan and I, we, we both thought, oh my goodness, here, mm -hmm. this is another dog that was burnt in a house fire. And here's the actual picture of the vet that stayed in the kennel with this dog the whole time until she could actually see that there was improvement. So I'm gonna show you, actually, I'll show you these pictures here. Here's what this dog looked like. Mm -hmm. Isn't that something? Mm -hmm. And here this vet has gone and she has been taking care of him the whole time until actually started to eat and is now doing better, moving around. Mm -hmm. And I think that's just a wonderful story. It it just it it uh it gives us hope, doesn't it, Gaetan? Absolutely. This is a we need that. We need positive story. The hope, right. story of life, and that's what we need right now. Yes. Okay. Now here's Thank you another for sharing this one. 
<laughs> and the other one before. <laughs> yeah. Well, here's another one that here's a, a man that the man was grieving over the loss of his own dog. So he went to the shelter and he adapted. Here, here's a picture here. He adapted nine dogs, a guinea pig, and a rabbit. <laughs> I'm sorry, not a guinea pig, a pig and a rabbit. So he took all of these dogs in. Isn't that isn't that great too? You forget a detail. What's that? That you share with me. Senior dog. Senior dogs. I'm sorry. Yeah, all senior dogs. Here's yeah. the pictures. Mm -hmm. And he's got a little beds. So look at the cute little bed he's got <laughs> for them. <laughs> Yeah, that's amazing. That's fantastic. Yeah, and this is his house here. Oh, look at he allows the dogs up on the on the table. That's okay. Yeah, I I was really really taken back by, you know, I love when we see these kind of things, don't you, Gaetan? That's an uplifting uh, moment when we see these things. It's give a, giving us hope. Humans are kind, and yeah. we are kindness in human. And this is what make human a value human. Right, right. Our kindness, our compassion, our empathy, our sympathy, our love. That's what make a human compared to a beast. Right. Okay, well, I'm not sure which one do I have here. Uh, oh, okay. So here, this one is about um, boots. This yes. is a man uh, that... Mm -hmm. Homeless man, he's in the search for his beloved service dog. So here's the story of Boots. Oops, ask later. So this is the man who lost his dog? Yes. He was a homeless guy. Mm -hmm. Can you comment a little bit because I cannot hear the sound on this side? Oh, you can't? Well, it's so so soft that I, I I cannot understand what they are saying. I don't know if the audience can understand. If you can, if somebody in the audience can text us and say yes, I hear the sound, or if the sound is too low. Okay. Maybe well, you know what? Yeah. Well, the good news is that he got his dog back. And it was all because mm -hmm. of social media and people that cared. They all got together. They wanted to make certain that he got his dog boots back. So he did. Okay. And so thank you, Spectrum News, for allowing us to show that, even though it, the, the sound wasn't all that great. <laughs> okay, let me see what else I got here. 
Okay. Uh, okay. This one, this one is something that um, I think you might, what's the word I want to use? I think you might be troubled by it. Oh, let me see. He's saying that we can't hear. We can't hear it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sounds. Okay. He says he can hear it. So no, yes, no. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, something on my end then, I guess. I, I yeah. don't know. We'll check the, the the technology, maybe the playback, or there's some because they had some volume control recently. Yeah, but it right. Was added only on the microphone, um, so I don't know if something yeah. connected like that has an effect on the sound when we play back a video. But we yeah. do we do our very best, and we pray the God of technology to support <laughs> us. Okay, well, then I'm just going to show this picture and tell this story. Okay. This is a picture of a, wow. a dog that had an eye infection. Now, don't judge everyone until you hear the story. He had an eye infection, and the cost of having a surgery without any guarantees was like eight to ten thousand dollars the people that owned him couldn't do that but the vet suggested well let's try and we'll remove his eyes to stop the 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 infection, infection. from spreading mm -hmm. so they went ahead and they had that done and then when the dog came home unfortunately they weren't able to deal with the fact that he was blind because he was bumping into things and that so it ended up that they decided they were going to take him to a shelter, which broke everyone's heart and people in social media. So a wonderful group, which we have been familiar with, called Helen Woodward, which mm -hmm. is out of California, were associated with them through an organization called Bark House. They came ahead and they went ahead and they adapted. They, they got him. And he is now in a foster home with another dog. And this dog is picking up and helping to lead this blind dog so we we want to say kudos to helen woodward for helping and i think this dog still needs to have a home so if anyone knows of anyone that would be great okay so that's it yeah. that that's all i have for today gaitan so let's one, talk uh, one more question about this last topic helen woodward is in the san diego area south southern california if somebody is outside of California, outside the area, is that possible to adopt the dog? Outside the area, if they're willing to go there, sure. Okay. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Just, because uh, I was wondering if there's any possible transportation, like uh, a service of uh, volunteer dog air transport, like uh, uh, our friend was doing. Julian, yeah. Julian was doing or something like that. Do you have any uh, idea? Well, what I can tell you in terms of transport from California to somewhere else, I don't know. I can only tell you about transport from here to somewhere, somewhere else. else. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for answering my question. Okay. I was not. I was not trying to uh, to trap you. No, I no. was just trying to uh, see if uh, somebody interested in the in the Midwest or the East Coast or North Pacific. Uh, Northwest Pacific Coast say, oh, I'm interested. And so when, uh, Ellen Woodward link is on our page and people can link that and ask or inquire about this, Doug. Right. After the show, I will put all the links in from the show mm -hmm. today. And, um, you know, I thought, Gaetan, maybe what we would do is share with the audience where we are right now, what, what we're doing, where we're going. And, oh, Charlie... That's Charlie. He wants to talk too. <laughs> let, let, let's share about where we're going on and what our hopes are for 2021. Well, I have uh, something to uh, share with you because I saw that yesterday and I found out, I found it very positive and very interesting because they spell 2021. The one is spelled W O N. So Very this good. is yeah. this is the year to win. Yeah. To win back our happiness, our joy, our freedom because at some point the covid will 
fade away and the vaccine will prevail and the health of the balance of the health of the population will tilt in a positive sense. So that's the year to win. Yes. 2021. I... So that's the year for that. That's my take on the 2021. I love it. Uh, I think this is a very good twist on 2021. Yeah. W -O -N, I'm, all, yeah. I'm all in favor of that. So we're in January, beginning of the year, and we have a lot of topic to cover. I'm eager. I'm talking about myself. I'm eager to go out and start filming. I'm eager to get some footage, original footage out there. And uh, I also want to pitch to the network before the end of the month, the Good Dog Day show, mm -hmm. which is a companion of the Dog Connection TV. We are partner, Katie and I, on that one. So I'm, uh, I'm very, very positive and very optimistic this year. At, and for the month to come, things are going to get better and better and better for everyone. Right. I'm very sad about the number of victims of the coronavirus. Over 280,000 so far. Mm -hmm. I remember in April or March, oh, no, it's a joke. Ah, pff, there's nothing there. But it's a serious virus. But we will prevail. And, and the people that have had the virus that... I mean, I some of them, some of my friends have passed away, and some of them have gotten through it, and I'm very, very grateful for that. For those that say, "Oh, it's not a virus, and don't worry about it," shame on you. Seriously, yeah. shame up. on you. Yeah, I lost, I lost three, two friends and one acquaintance in mm -hmm. the last year. So, uh, one of the guy, one of the friend, I knew him since. 19 late 80s mm -hmm. okay and he passed away in about he, he got the news that he had the coronavirus and few days later he was gone uh, mm -hmm. i think in four days he passed away from the moment he found out to the moment he passed away so right it's a serious thing and uh, it's a serious virus it's a very dangerous virus and not, not everybody suffered the same level or is infected the same way or affected the same way, but it's still a very, very dangerous virus. So hopefully we'll keep that behind us. Yeah, okay. Oh, Coco's here. He says, you've got, you've got a gay town. Amazing, positive things are coming this year. All of us will find much more happiness this year. Hey, thanks, Coco, for being on. Coco is the uh, uh, executive director for Bark House, and you guys know that I've been working a lot with Bark House, and yeah. so has Gay Town. Yeah. Speaking of Bark House, let, let, let me bring you up to date. Okay, on, go ahead. Yeah. By the way, Coco, thank you. I know our my last visit with Barkhouse and Katy and in your area was way too short. Yeah. Uh, my next visit will at least be a week. Be aware, Katy, okay. and uh, I would uh, love to reconnect with every one of you and uh, you know do something positive. Right, Katy, go ahead. Well, the good news is is that our our pet rescue pilots. Yes. Uh, Yes, with uh, Julian J Javor, he is going to be up and running again, hopefully by tomorrow. Wow. Yay. 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 So that means that we can do a mamas and puppies flight. And okay. Kelly, who is not only my, my dear friend, but she's also my business uh, associate too. We, we are absolutely loving what's going on because our legacy is to be able to transfer all of the work that we've been doing to Coco and to the people here in Las Cruces in mm -hmm. terms of Bark House. So everything seems to be fitting together now. Right. Uh, our logistics program is coming together for transport. The uh, We've got a contract that's coming together with the county so that we can do some spay-neuter. And it, it, it 
it's so exciting to see what's going on. Once mm -hmm. that contract is in place, then we have a whole logistical system that includes transport, the community involvement, uh, lots more to come for everyone to see. And hopefully with us doing these live shows, we'll be able to get out the word and get the brand out about Bark House and, and the dog connection and things that we're doing uh, in, in the community as well as nationally. And so I'm if, very excited. And if Julian ever is coming to fly in the Midwest, anywhere in the Midwest, Mississippi, Indiana, Illinois, Wisconsin, Michigan, Minnesota, in these area, Iowa, I'll drive there. <laughs> and I'll, I'll greet him at the airport. Yeah. And I will film that and I'll put that in our show, on our show. Yeah, so, good. Keep that in mind. If somebody flying in towards the Midwest, I'll get there and I will be there when the, the plane arrive and I'll film from that point on until the dog reached the shelter or the their new mom and dad. Okay. That, well that's it, my my love. I, I would love to do that. Yeah, I know you do. And and we would love that too. And actually we'd love to have a documentary about the behind the scenes of Bark House. And you know, there's so many things that can be done. When yeah. you think about transport, most of the time people think, well, you can it's just real easy to get in a plane or but when you're transporting animals, it's an altogether different thing. And there's so many rules and regulations, and, and if you want donations, it's hard to get that. But the, quite frankly, transport is the only way to help an area mm -hmm. that has an overpopulation of pets. Mm -hmm. Because they can't rely upon people in the area to adopt if they're not yeah. adopting. Right. So the animals go into the shelter and what's the alternative to euthanize or the shelter has to find, the shelter just becomes nothing more than a warehouse because right. that's all they can do. They can't adopt. Mm -hmm. And then they have mm -hmm. to find a rescue or they have to find foster homes to get the animals out of there. But mm -hmm. still, if they're in a foster or if they're in a rescue and they can't adopt them out either, then what do you do? The only, only answer, the only solution is to yep. transport, and that's where Bark House comes in. Yep. And you know, folks, a and lot of people feel that, excuse me, a lot of people feel really? that Bark House is a rescue, and it is a rescue, but it's a rescue, as Julian would say, by relocation, mm -hmm. because we're not rescuing right here in Las Cruces. We are transporting them. We put them in a holding facility. We make certain that they have, that they're vetted, that they're healthy, that they meet the bark house standards. And then yeah. from the standards, from there, then they are either accepted or they're rejected for transport because not all dogs are, are uh, eligible for transport. You know, but then the question is, well, what do you do with them? That's not really where Bark House gets involved. We don't get involved in what happens. What we get involved with is getting the dogs transported, relocated, relocated yeah. right. So that's really about it. And my brother here, I guess he's talking, he's making a... <laughs> It would it would help if those doses of vaccine he's talking about the coronavirus were not sitting in freezers rather than in the arms of us old folks. Yep. I agree I, with that. Yeah. I agree with that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and by the way, uh Ron Dale says a happy 80th birthday. Oops. <laughs> hey, I'm I'm trailing right behind him. <laughs> My birthday's I'll let you guys know way ahead of time when you can start sending presents. My birthday's in March. <laughs> okay, right. you have a two month notice, March, getting ready for yes, Kathy. Yes, right, yeah. She deserve a truckload of goodness. Yes. So let's close the show with this. Let's take an example from Keith Walker, mm -hmm. who a homeless guy saw a need rather than worrying about who's going to take care of the animals, who's going to pay for it. He took action and he went and he saved these animals in, in the time of a crisis. Mm -hmm. If we all learn from that and we all say, listen, we can do this. We can, we can uh, take advantage of, of our resources. Don't be afraid. Hopefully there's going to be people and there'll be organizations that will come forward and say, 
you can contact us. At least do something. Stay with the dog temporarily. And there, there's groups like Best Friends that have a, a foster program where they say they would like to see the community get actively mm -hmm. involved where the community is taking these animals in. And then somehow they get reimbursed for food, for, for um, the vetting of these animals rather than bringing them to a shelter. It's not right. a good idea to bring a dog to a shelter. It really, really isn't. If you can keep them in your home, do that. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we All need right. to be human before we close. Human means you have compassion, you have sympathy, you have love, and you care. Mm -hmm. The opposite of that is a beast. So as human, we have within ourselves love, compassion, sympathy, empathy, all of the above, and we can do great thing as long as we let these quality flow. And this is 2021, and yes, we are one. going to win it. Yes. And hey, namaste to all of our friends. Love, everybody. We, we wish you love and, and happiness and spiritual wealth as well as regular wealth, but more so spiritual wealth and in 2021. We're excited to be here and uh, we'll see you next week, folks. See you next week. Be well. God okay. love you. Bye-bye.